Hello everyone, and today we have a water cooling system for PC from the company Arctic for a video review. Namely, the model is called Liquid Freezer 3420A RGB. The whole thing is delivered in such an unusual triangular box made of medium-thick corrugated cardboard. On its face, there is a scheme of the cooler along with its model number and some more data regarding the provided warranty and socket compatibility. Around the back, you will find more details on the product's technical specifications. There are also two QR codes on this side, one leading to the online manual and the second to the support and feedback link. I want to warn you in advance that there will be no various tests in this video, since I am an ordinary user. I share my impressions, experience of use and general conclusions that may be useful to those who are considering a purchase. Let's now move on to unpacking. Inside the box you will find all-in-one PWM cable, PWM cable with separate control, a set of pump mounts on the processor, a set of screws and washers for installing the radiator in the case Arctic MX6 thermal paste in a syringe, 0.8 grams, a T20 key, pump module with fan, and of course the main guest of this video is the liquid freezer, 3420A RGB itself. As you can see right out of the box, all the fans are pre-assembled on the radiator, there are all the cables, the system is sealed, filled, which saves your time during the installation process, which also becomes easier. The Liquid Freezer 3 420A RGB in 420mm format is a large and bulky water cooling system because its dimensions are 458 by 138 by 38 mm The design of the water block with a pump has a cylindrical shape. The pump body is made of hard plastic. Above the hidden VRM fan is a cover with imitation of impeller blades. This area does not rotate but is illuminated by ARGB LEDs. One ARGB cable is used to control the illumination. It also serves to control the illumination of the fans on the radiator. The VRM fan module is simply docked and held in place by magnets. The base of the heatsink, directly adjacent to the processor cover, is a copper plate. Its outer surface is ground and slightly polished. Towards the center, the surface is convex with a difference of about 0.1 millimeters. The dimensions of this plate are 44 by 40 millimeters, and the inner part, limited by holes, is 33 by 29 millimeters. The radiator is made of aluminum and has a relatively durable matte finish on the outside. It is thicker than usual, at 38 mm deep, but it is not as dense. Therefore, it does not require high static pressure fans for optimal performance. The fans can spin at speeds up to 1,900 RPM with 70 CFM and a static pressure of 2 mm H2O. According to Arctic, more fins should provide increased cooling performance. The fan frame is made of durable plastic. There are rubber vibration isolating pads on the corners of the fan frames. However, the weight of the fan and the rigidity of these pads allow us to reasonably assume that due to the high resonant frequency, this system will not have any significant anti-vibration properties in any case. The shape of the fan impeller hints at the ability of the fan to create high static pressure, which is what is needed in this case. The impeller blades are enclosed in a ring, which can increase the efficiency of the fan. ARGB LEDs are placed around the fan stator, illuminating the impeller from the inside. Fan cables are equipped with standard 4 and 3 pin connectors for connecting motors and addressable lighting. The latter is supplemented with a pass-through connector for connecting a chain. Installation. To avoid all cable mess, you can use the all-in-one PWM cable, which takes care of the pump, the VRM fan, and the radiator fans. If you want to control everything separately, connect the respective connectors to mainboard headers, or use a dedicated PWM controller. You must remove the stock brackets and install the bundled ones for the AMD sockets. The brackets are labeled L for left and R for right. Since the hotspot in newer generation AMD processors is not in the IHS's dead center, the AMD mounting brackets have a 5mm offset to achieve better performance. For Intel sockets, removing the main board from the chassis is better to have an easier time since you have to remove the stock Intel independent loading mechanism, ILM. It is not as straightforward as the AMD one, but the provided contact frame promises to do a better job than the provided one. And kudos to the Arctic for delivering it while more expensive AIOs don't. Since you can't rotate the faceplate, you're forced to position the block with the tubing at the bottom if you want the Arctic logo upright. This also places the wires at the bottom. They're not the longest cables, especially after you've fed them around the water block to the nearest grommet. Considering motherboards usually only feature two fan headers side by side, you don't have many options other than to stretch your wire, so it doesn't look neat. You could use a fan splitter, but that defeats the purpose of controlling each in isolation. I'd have preferred Arctic to place the cables at the top and make the faceplate rotatable. It wouldn't go amiss to provide extensions in the box or make the multi-wire longer too. Whichever wire you choose, it's difficult to change your mind about your preference when the water block is on. So just make sure you're certain. 
After that, simply secure the pump to the CPU, screw in the radiator, and slide on the faceplate. The latter snaps on magnetically without any faff. And that's it, the installation is complete. To sum it up, as an ordinary user who doesn't really understand all sorts of tests, I can say that the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3420A RGB is silent. It provides good performance and its advertising price is very good. There are some assets that this AIO has, which I can mention again here. For starters, it has a fan to cool down the main board's VRMs, which can get pretty hot given that Intel's high-end CPUs can draw more than 360 watts if you dial high enough 250 watts the PL1 and PL2 BIOS settings. Besides the VRM fan, another strong point of this AIO is that it provides an LGA1700 contact frame in the cooler's bundle to replace the stock one, offering better contact with the CPU. The non-stock contact frame does a way better job than the stock one, and this is also shown by the CPU power consumption. The only problem here is that the cooler's installation in Intel systems is not as straightforward, and it will be easier if you remove the main board from the system, which is what Arctic suggests. Lastly, I should emphasize that this cooler doesn't support other Intel sockets but the LGA17001, so it won't be compatible if you use an older Intel system. Speaking of installation, the fact that the AIO comes with the fans pre-installed and all of their cables in place will significantly relieve many users, especially the not-so-experienced ones. Moreover, you can use the all-in-one connector to control everything through a single header. I wouldn't advise that because it is better to have the VRM fan controlled separately since it has a small diameter and can spin at high speeds. Hence, it can be annoying if its speed is paired with the notably slower radiator fans. The ARGB lighting is the cherry on top, especially for users with systems that expose their internals. And that's all from me. You can buy it using the link in the description. Thank you all for watching. Good luck to everyone. Bye everyone. Ciao.